Our task edit form displays all fields from top to bottom. It works well on any kind of screen size. When you switch the form to edit mode, some field values will render slightly differently to expose additional controls. For example, the Tags field displays tags in several boxes, with a dropdown rendered below. A smaller screen will render a full page presentation of the form. The smallest of screens will wrap field values to the next line in order to maximize the usable screen real estate. Note that the edit action is now rendered as a promo button in the bottom right corner. The save action will be rendered in the top right corner. Actions that overflow the screen size will be hidden. A list of all actions will be available under the context menu. Modern apps are required to adopt to screens of any dimension. Our to-do app certainly does that. Most of the time, you'll find that custom layouts are only needed on larger screens. Your app will take care of the rest of the screen sizes automatically. Let's organize and change the flow of fields using form categories. Switch to the application generator. Select the project name and press design to open the project designer. In the project explorer on the right side of the screen, switch to the controllers tab. Let's expand tasks, expand views. Let's configure the edit form one view. Notice that by default, all the fields are grouped in one category. Double click on C1 category. Change the header text to simply task. And let's remove the default edit description. And let's save the changes to the category. Press browse to see the changes that we've made to the edit form. Notice that the header text of the category is now set to task. The category description has been removed. Let's go ahead and rearrange some of the data fields inside the first category and create a second category to contain audit information such as created, creator, and completed. Let's expand category C1. Let's drag the status data field after the date data field. Right click on edit form one view and press new category. Set a header text of audit. Let's enable floating on this category. This will render the data fields in multiple columns depending on the screen width. Go ahead and save the new category. Let's select the fields created, creator, and completed, and drag these fields onto the new category. Let's see our changes in action. The status field has now been placed after the date field. If we scroll down, we can see an additional category called Audit that contains the three fields that we've placed, Created, Completed, and Creator. There is sufficient screen width to display two columns of fields. The next thing that we would like to do 
is position attachments and expenses data view fields in tabbed categories. We will also add a third tab that contains the location borrowed fields, address, city, state, postal code, and country. Let's create another category by right-clicking on Edit Form 1 and selecting New Category. Set the flow to New Row. Specify a tab name of Attachments. Let's save this category. Drop the Attachments data field into this new category. Let's create a category for expenses. Specify the tab name of expenses and save the category. Drop the expenses data field onto this new category. Let's create one more category for the location fields. Specify a tab of address and save the category. Let's drop the five borrowed fields into the new category. Let's position the Audit category after the Address category. Let's ensure that the Audit category is on a new row separate from the tabs. Set the Flow to New Row and Save. Let's see the changes. Three tabs are now rendered on our form. The first tab will show a list of attachments, the second shows a list of expenses, and the third shows our address fields. We can view the audit fields underneath these three tabs. Let's split the first category into two separate columns. Create a new category in Edit Form 1 view. Assign a header text of details. Specify a flow of new column and save the category. Let's place this category after the first category in Edit Form 1. Let's take the fields Owner, Location ID, and Tags and drop them into this new category. Go ahead and regenerate the app. Notice that the first category has been split into two separate categories rendered in two columns. If a user needs more space to work with their task, they can always maximize the modal. Let's take a look at the form on a medium-sized screen. Notice that the form is rendered in full screen. We still have two columns rendered here. The audit category has rendered the data fields in a single column. Let's take a look at the form on the smallest screen. Notice that the first two categories are no longer rendered in two columns. There is insufficient space to render two columns and offer a usable form. The field values are wrapped on the next line after the label. Let's configure forms to display as modal at specific screen resolutions with a specific size when needed. For example, let's create a new expense. The expense form will slide in from the right side of the screen. Let's modify the behavior and appearance of this modal form. Double click on the expenses data field. Let's add some tags that will define the behavior of the modal.
First, we will ensure that this form is always modal. Next, the modal should shrink its height to fit the content. Then, limit the width of the modal to extra small. Finally, let's hide the page header. Save the data field and regenerate the app. Let's try adding a new expense. Note that the model now shows over the task form and is both narrower and shorter. The page header is not displayed. Let's try it on a smaller screen. While the tasks form will render in full screen mode, the expense form continues to be shown in a modal. Note that forms that contain a blob field will automatically show a preview image as a background in the header. For performance reasons, only a small thumbnail is displayed. Let's enable the full resolution background for this form. Switch back to the project designer. Expand the attachments controller. Expand views. And expand edit form one. Double click on the attachment field. Let's ensure that the original image is displayed in the header by tagging the field header image original. We can also remove the background by tagging header image none. Save the field and regenerate the app. Let's open the edit form for an attachment. Notice that the image displayed at the top of the form is now nice and crisp. Only code on time apps allow creating a single form that adapts to any screen size without any thought or effort on the developer's part. When the automatic flow options are insufficient to meet business requirements, we can create custom templates. Let's create a custom template for this particular screen size. First, we will need to switch to the administrative account. Use the Identity Manager to switch to the account. Open the form. Activate the context menu by pressing the three dot icon. Select the Developer Tools option. Select Form Layout. The list of sizes allows us to download a template for each screen size. Let's create a template for the current screen size, medium, as well as one for extra small. Press download. Let's save this file to the project directory. Switch to your documents folder. Select code on time, projects, website factory, the name of your project, under the website folder, create a new folder called views. Save the file to this folder. The file name must be the name of the controller. Dot, the name of the view, dot HTML. This has created a template in our project directory. Let's edit this template using Visual Studio. Switch back to the application generator. Click on the project name and press develop. In the solution explorer, expand the views folder and double click on the template. Let's select all text, right click and press format selection. Notice that there are two layouts in this template. The first layout is for the form of size extra small. The second layout is for the form of size medium. Let's add some custom HTML content and customize the appearance of our form. 
At the top of the extra small layout, let's add a header. This header contains a material icon of name assignment late. Let's also add a background color to the row container that contains the description field. Let's also modify the medium layout. Let's add a similar header to the top of the form. Let's add a different background color to the description row. Make sure to save the file. Switch back to the running application in your browser and refresh the page. Open the form. Notice that the first thing we can see in the form is our custom header. The description row has a wheat color. Let's try the form on an extra small screen. Notice that our header is present here with a different icon. The description row has a light blue background.